guys, Campbell here from the Property Factory, and um, I'm really excited because we are launching our new business. Um, not new for us because we've been building it for some time now, but the Finance Factory is alive and kicking. And I'm sitting here with Julian Ellis, the Managing Director for the Finance Factory, who has been basically head down, backside up for the last six months getting this baby ready to go. So I'm really, really excited about this. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's been some time coming, but uh, all good things come to those who wait. And um, our doors are open. So Julian, before we talk about the business, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, you, where, where have you come from? Uh, many moons ago, I started life as a lawyer. Um, so here in Christchurch, uh, and I eventually I, I migrated across to financial services. Um, so I did a stint in the banks um, before uh, going into the private sector um, in an advisory capacity where um, I was involved with both debt and investment products. Right. Okay. So, wow, interesting background. I mean, law, finance, advisory. And in that world, Julian, um, I'm showing my 53 years of age here, but when I became a mortgage broker in the 2000s, uh, it took 45 minutes. So how, how easy is it to become a, a finance uh, advisory person in today's world? Uh, it's a little bit more involved than that. Uh, I think it took us about six months from uh, first registering the company to getting uh, an advice provider's license to enable us to operate in our own right. And that was a bit of a loaded question for me because we have used eight brokers from around the country for the last three years. We have had a 50% approval decline rate. Good people, uh, people I've known for a long time. Um, but the world of finance has changed significantly um, from the banks and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand to the point that you really do know, need to know what you're doing and have the right systems. Our approval rate, so Julian's actually been transacting for the last six months in that startup with test customers and staff and the like, and we're sitting on an 85% uh, approval rate. So that's not because they were easier loans or, or that they were just um, easy deals. It was because Julian and the team actually know how to package property um, or debt applications. They know how to deal with the banks. They know which banks to deal with. I think we are now represented by 50 lenders. Is that right, Julian? Yes, yeah, a little bit over 50. Wow. And I just want to talk about or ask you um, a couple of customers come to mind. One of my previous wonderful customers that I've done a lot of business with over the time, I came through the business, two mortgage brokers told her that she needed to sell four properties to go ahead and they had six and they were being told they had to sell four. Why, Julie? What happened there and how did we salvage that? Oh, so uh, what often happens with large portfolios is some of the properties generate income, some of them bring equity and so there were two loans expiring that the lender wasn't prepared to roll over and unfortunately the loss of those two properties necessitated the loss of two more. So um, this investor was faced from going from a, a large portfolio to something that was pretty small by their standards that they were uh, understandably upset about. Um, we we did, once we actually delved into the financials um, of, of the, the trading company, the, the look-through company that owned all the assets, um, there was uh, basically, what it, it turned out that the, the children's private schooling was being paid by a family trust, but the way it had been documented was, was murky, um, which gave the client a strongly negative, um, what they call uncommitted monthly income. Um, working with the uh, investors, solicitors, and, and the trust, um, we were able to redocument things uh, to show that, in fact, the client was credit worthy and could afford to keep the two properties in question, which meant they didn't have to sell the other two. So they were able to stay at six, um, and because of this, they, they, unbeknown to everyone, they had a seven on the way, which they're likely to be able to fund as well. So let me get this right. The, the, the description of the situation was assumed by previous brokers to be a lot negatively, sorry, to be worse than it actually was. Uh, they just took the zero feeds at face value. Wow. So again, they didn't spot that it was, it, it was irregular the way that it all looked. And this is what we've seen with applications that have been declined with previous brokers. 
the, the devil's in the detail with lending. And something like that, where grandparents are paying private school fees, is real. Mum and dad aren't paying them. When that expense was taken out of their circumstances, it changed having to sell properties to be able to buy more. Which sounds crazy, but that's how finite the banks are getting at this in this juncture right now. So unless you've got a broker or a team that actually know this stuff and actually question things and look under every stone, people's lives can change. I mean, what about the young man who came to you who had been declined twice to get a first home buyer uh, loan um, at, I think, 20-something years old? Tell us about that guy, Judy. Um, so, so this guy had, trans, uh, he'd, he'd changed industry to something that was unrelated, and the industry, uh, within the industry, was standard to be uh, a, a on a, what's called a contract for services rather than a contract of employment, uh, which is deemed to be more high risk by the lenders. It's effectively self-employed. Typically with self-employment, you need two years worth of uh, financial statements to back your earning capacity. Um, and so this, where this guy was failing was he only had seven months. Um, using his his zero feeds that were tracking his his earnings and expenditure uh, we were able to uh, build an argument that he was successful in what he was doing and that he was going to earn an acceptable level of income um, we coupled that with a reference from his uh, principal I call rather than employer it's called a principal um, saying that things were going well and they expected the arrangement to continue and that was enough for the for, a uh, high street bank to, to lend him um, the amount of money that he needed to buy his first home. So again, packaging a deal in a way that made more, I guess, financial sense to a bank through a third party accounting software, Zero, gave the bank comfort that he was good for it. Yeah, but in both situations, at face value, they, they didn't meet criteria. Um, and it was all about giving the lender something to hang their hat on to depart from credit policy. There are still some discretions in banking, but to get the bankers to exercise uh, some of those discretionary powers, you do have to put forward a strong argument. Okay. I mean, I've seen firsthand over the last six months, and, I, and I, like, I've worked alongside Julian in, in previous businesses for, for four years now, seen how he operates. And one of the things that has changed significantly in New Zealand with finance is, is the detail. And the banks are now looking through everything with a fine tooth comb. And I guess in my observations working with Julian um, in the business this last six months especially is that there's nothing he hasn't seen. Um, we have lenders for a specific purpose um, and we're also very, very big on the tools that we provide for our customers, our digital, very digital uh, load application process because we are using the latest and greatest software um, and some of our uh, the competitors out there are using uh, software that's 20 years old. So one of the things we can manage is volume, and we can also manage complicated process. Uh, if you've got a, an investor with 10 or 20 properties, it's all there based on the uh, tools and systems that we're using. So I think we're now up to 40 years expertise in the finance factory team, even though this is effectively the launch, because we've got so many customers that have been asking us if we can help them with finance, and we have literally been referring them to third parties. Today, now, we can help you directly with Julian and the team with the Finance Factory, and um, I take the picture challenge that um, we're going to do a better job than most people that you'll talk to out there because it's gotten so much harder. You really do need experts like Julian and Dawn and the rest of the team to help you get finance. So, Welcome to the team, Julian. I'm really happy to have you on board. And um, if you want to book an appointment with Julian, I think you've got some things coming up. Um, what are you going to do every every week for the next we're, 12 weeks, Julian? Uh, yeah, we're committing to, we're going to release a video every Friday um, that, that hopefully explains and deciphers uh, a pain point that's present in the lending market at the moment. So there's, there's a lot of stuff through the media, um, which is, is, I guess, demoralising, um, might put people off. Um, and so our, uh, what we're going to try and do is decode some of that and, um, and actually name it and identify it and then talk about mitigants and ways, ways to manage it so that you can keep moving forward. Um, at the end of the day, it's about hopes, dreams and aspirations and uh, there's, there's no romance without finance.
not in romance without farming. I think that's that's real. And one of the other things, so you're going to have 12 educational videos coming your way over the next 12 weeks. New Zealand has a really low level of financial literacy. And um, I would imagine in those 12 weeks, you'll learn more than you would at school or university about finance. Because as I said earlier, there's nothing Julian hasn't seen in the world of finance. And it might be a boring topic for some people, but it can make or break a financial uh, difference in your world if you're getting a loan approved or not. Uh, and I take that young first home buyer, you've changed his life. So um, that's, yeah. that's real. Yeah, and to even quantify it, uh, the difference between buying a house now or in 12 months time could easily be 60, 70, 90 thousand dollars. Wow. So, the Finance Factory is open for business. Julie and the team are looking forward to your calls or your emails. You can even book an appointment on our website. Um, so, we'll be sending you links to that website over the coming days and weeks. And um, we look forward to helping you get ahead on your finance and investment journey. Thanks and have a great weekend.